Fuck fleas, man. I hate them. I hate seeing them. Fleas? Yes. I have 10 in a Tupperware and I just, because I put soap in water and it's their little jail cell. <laughs> and I'll The Ryan McGee private prison. If I fleas. find one on Lego or if I find one, I just fucking take it and I put it in there and I watch it suffer. And then I, <laughs> and then sometimes I take some soap and I, and I glop it on top of it. And then I watch it with the soap sink down to the bottom, struggling. That little fuck. I have a, I have a prison of. Uh, currently 10 inmates of, of fleas. So Ryan, you got a private prison going. I do. Dude, I hate fleas. When I was a kid, when my pets would get fleas. I blame fleas, you, Matt. Why are you blaming me? It's, I have, that, one, had, it's I, that one flea. I've had no that fleas infested, in my house. That infested my whole house. It's that one flea on that kitten. The timing is questionable. Because <laughs> it was literally the day after where I noticed the fl like the fleas. We haven't had any flea problems though, and we, we were the one with six cats. Yeah, because I took now. it because I took the problem for you. You took the one flea. <laughs> I took the one flea away. I used to I used to catch fleas and put them in a Ziploc bag, just like how you, it's funny you're doing this because I did the same thing where I'd mm -hmm. be like, "Fuck these fleas," and I take them off my cats and I put them in a Ziploc bag and be like, "Ha <laughs> ha!" But they bite your ankles throughout the day. They and all. suck, dude. I have like flea bites fucking because they last for like ten years. The what? flea bites. Ten, oh, not literally ten years, yes, but, they, but they, they last, last for, a long, for a long time. time. You know, they'll last for like a I, week. I have the, like a, a a collar on Lego, which is supposed to help. It's like a Soresto collar. I use the back ointment, but I still find some fleas on them. It's like, are like why why is it these fleas are just? I feel like I've run into a new clan of fleas. Like, they're the gorillas of fleas. Feed him asbestos, that's actually supposed to help a lot. But I don't recall this being the flea episode. I don't think it is, actually. I recall episode 199, as promised, being the poo-poo episode. Yes, it is. So, uh, he, here's the sound of a nice poo-poo to start it off. Welcome to the poo-poo episode, everyone. Uh, if you remember, in episode 198, we had a lot of very serious, real discussions, so we promised that episode 199 would be the poo-poo episode. Yeah. To, to uh, balance it out, right? So, welcome everybody. Hope that you've all been having a good week, a good day, a good evening, whenever you're listening to this. Even if it's the year 2026, you can still enjoy the poo-poo episode. Exactly. Ryan, put another sound effect in. Oh, uh, where? Just here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. Fill the episode with that. Every now and then I'll okay. probably throw one in. Okay, it's, the, it's the poo-poo episode. We've had two podcasts in a row talking about very serious topics and it's time to get and, back to our roots guys and i feel like people need a need, need a break from the darkness that's the thing is you know we'll talk about serious stuff stuff that's very important to us and very important in the world but at the same time hey you got to have that poo poo got to have that poo poo it's what we built our channel on it is we wouldn't be super mega without having some poo poo episodes so in fact for the special uh youtube viewers unfortunately you early spotify users won't be able Ooh. to enjoy this Here's here, here's a picture of some poo poo. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> YouTube viewers are looking at it right now, going, "Damn, these Spotify viewers, these Apple Podcast viewers are jealous." Sure, y'all got see. it early, but do y'all get to see the poo poo? Nope, I don't nope, think so. Nope, nope, sorry, that's just too bad. Go home, tell dad. I'm uh, I'm uh, moving on from poo poo just for a little bit. Jo don't worry, I'm gonna come back to the poo poo. But okay, I uh, I I encountered the most ridiculous bullshit earlier this morning because. So, you know, I have I have a website. I have MattHWatson.com, but I've never particularly loved the username MattHWatson because it's a little confusing with that H in there. People think it's Matthew Watson. How do you think I feel? Eli Rye McGee? Mm -hmm. Well, yours is very down to the point. It's Eli Rye McGee. But yeah, but people are like, I don't know how to pronounce it. Mine's like, like Matthew Rye McGee. Like Math they try Watson? to do that thing. People always think it's Math Watson. Ah. Or Matthew missing the E. Because basically it's just Matthew Watson combined without the E. I wish I just had Matt Watson. Or I wish I actually just had at Matt, and I DM'd the guy that owns it, and I was like, hey, man, what, uh, you got a price? There's no way he's giving up at Matt. Well, I asked him, like, for a price, and he's like, considering I've turned down people with requests of $25,000, uh, you're- Is this guy, like, famous? No. Dude, I, dude, if I wasn't, like, as comfortable as I am working on YouTube- and I was like still in South Carolina working at a food line or something, I would 100% give up my at for $25,000. I don't know why he wouldn't. Maybe it's a prize. No no hate to the dude because it's a good username. If he wants to keep it, he can keep it. But he was like, considering I've turned down offers of $25,000, I don't know. Is he on Twitter right now, at Matt? Yeah. Can you DM him and say, like, listen, can we just start a bully campaign? And give him the <laughs> no, don't. Do not. Do not. Do not. No, he, don't. He's, he's just living his life. He's, he's a nice dude. Um, and he's probably going to... He's probably going to message Matt after this about What it. the hell, man? Uh, anyway, I wanted to get... So I can't I, tell if this guy has a mustache or not. 
And it's like going or if it, you can't tell if it's coming or going. You see what I mean? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that Matt? Is that at Matt? I think ever since you tried to do the mustache, he was trying to copy you. I think so. He's actually, he started a new gaming channel called Hyper Mega, and I'm getting a little upset. Did he? Yeah. No, he didn't. <laughs> Wish. <laughs> he, um, well, um, he, uh... He is the Matt, though, and I would, I would kill he, it. You know, it would, it would undo my verification if I changed my name, but I, I would, I would do it for, just to have at Matt. Uh-oh. What? What? Um, he, he, <sighs> I'm looking at his uh, d- description, and one of the links is uh, at some company, but it says account suspended. Is he a pro- Does he need to be canceled? <laughs> <laughs> we ruined this dude's life just so I can get the username. We crush him financially with debt and court cases until like he has to take the money, and it's only like a hundred bucks. God, I swear to God, if he if he sends like a harassment lawsuit over this, do not we're not do, do not antagonize here, at Matt. So we can play this part in court. Do not antagonize at Matt on Twitter. We have. No culpability. It's just a subject on our podcast. He's probably a fucking amazing dude with hopes and dreams. He's probably already loaded because if he's turning down twenty five grand for a Twitter handle, well, he he works with several companies. One of them's called At Fun Kids. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, children's radio for the UK. Fun Kids nationwide. Oh, so Fun Kids Junior. He's British. Yes. Okay. That explains it. All right. Well, no, but I know there's gonna minions be, and Taylor Swift. That, is that Sean Mendez? That that looks like one of those. I'm Who's gonna be this? honest. That looks like is one that of those. Sean Mendez. I I don't know. Who, who is Sean, this? I don't know what Sean Mendez looks like. Neither do I. I That's just, at Matt. That's I'm, Matt. I'm gonna look up Sean Mendez. I Sean think, I think that he. Uh, that looks like one of those fake like Elsa Gate things. It, well, it's not. It's a real company. Anyway, I know there's that group of fans that are like, like Sean Mendez. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Mendez. <laughs> I'll throw up the picture. That's an old white man. <laughs> Picture on YouTube. That's Fuck the real you, Sean Spotify. Um, no, but I'm they're just kidding. I love. No, no, no. There really That's are some want. kids that are gonna go and and DM him some some stupid shit. Don't. I'm serious. That just makes me look bad. Don't do that. <laughs> well, we're gonna troll Matt and do it anyway. Okay. Well, the other Matt know that I don't condone that. Anyway, and I don't condone it oh. as well. Because he's going to come after the company, not the person. Brent Lilly actually was the one that gave us the idea of Game Grumps Incorporated. So take all legal matters up with that company. <laughs> Game Grumps Incorporated. But don't do you we, have to name it like an incorporated thing? Or you don't no? have to. The why, incorporated comes afterwards. Why did we do that? Super Mega Productions Incorporated. Well, I think the incorporated <laughs> is just put there, right? Because yeah. it is and it, just like something, something LLC, like Smosh got LLC. It, got it, got it, got it. Um, but the reason I brought this whole thing up is because I have MattHWatson.com, and I wanted just MattWatson.com because I don't want to be confusing. So I'm gonna try to Does someone else have this website. Well, someone parked it, right? Parked it. Oh, like bought it and was like, ha ha. Yeah. So it it's a very actually it's a very lucrative business of parking domains. Uh, Rooster Teeth, the people that um like the main guys that you, people would think of of early Rooster Teeth. That's essentially what they did. They like took a bunch of kind of uh, just generic names like Let's Plays and and just websites with a general name, and yep. they'd sell them to people who would want those websites. It was its own kind of market. That's the thing is it's like, oh, I can buy uh, chickennoodles.com, and I bought it for 8 bucks, and then eventually some company's going to want it, and I could sell it for 35000 But the person who owns mattwatson.com didn't want 35000 you know how much they wanted for mattwatson.com? How much? One million dollars. One million? One million dollars. I got the email back this morning. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I have a feeling it's $1 like- One million dollars? I think it's a middle schooler that bought the website for like two bucks and thinks that you're rich because you work on YouTube. I think that they didn't actually have an offer. I think what they did was they looked up my name and they were like, oh, oh, he's f- he's famous. That means he's rich. Uh, One million dollars for this website. Like, no. I offered a thousand. A thousand was my max. We like, are so far away from even the company having a million dollars. People that think we're we're like super wealthy. We're well off, but we're we've not, said it many times. We're we are we, we're comfortable as fuck, but we're we're not going out there buying McLarens for no reason. We're not those YouTubers that got three McLarens in the garage, and that is also that is, that is not a call out on Captain Spark. How about this? I'll put it this way: so many YouTubers, you wouldn't even think about like because of their subscriber base or maybe the views they get, they end up going off and they and they'll they'll buy a Tesla as kind of like their first big purchase. We're still not up to that point. We we don't have Tesla money. Yet. I'd love to buy a Tesla, but. 
I would. I did. I did buy. Uh, uh, I did. It's fucking fly in here. Uh, buy a, a new car. You as, well, fucking uh, pig. Not like recently, but I replaced the the. What is it? The, the Fiat, the dude. Fiat a while back. People, that was a big deal. People were like, is the Fiat gone? Yeah, it's gone. I needed trunk space and shit. That car was amazing, and I have so many great memories tied to it, and I loved whipping that thing around. But I gotta say, it was it, Fiats are such so easy tiny to drive cars. and park, dude. I, I loved um, the two things was on highways you could easily just whoop, like get in. Someone's not letting you traffic. in, which is very common in California. Oh yeah. Like, oh okay. Whoop. You're just a tic tac. You whoop. Yeah. And then uh, parking super easy. Never had whip. trouble. Yeah, you could, you could park it like twenty miles per hour, just whip into a. Whoosh. And part of me kind of misses it, but I, I have it. to say I I do enjoy having leg room and room for people to sit in the back seats. That's nice. I think the perfect car is a is a sedan. Is is like a. We both have sedans. We do. I have a, I have a Honda Civic, and you have a some Mazda car. And, yeah. And it's it's uh you have you have the Mazda sports car. Yeah. And um, I have the M Mazda Eight. They actually do. I, I will say. A Mazda 8. I looked up. Sports cars that are from like normal car companies like Honda and Nissan, they have yeah. some nice cars. See, I'm my next purchase, like my next kind of like you know, how people have big purchases. Like, you hear about like uh, my dad uh, got a boat at a what, at an auction thing, whatever. My <laughs> next, my next big purchase, I, I, I'm really wanting to go out and, and drive a, a, a motorcycle, but oh, part of me feels like that'll be the end of me. I'm, t I'm. I have too much bad luck for that not to you be the way. Have bad luck at all. Well, you might have a little bad luck. I, I <laughs> but the, I can't remember what happened, and this is going to be a shitty story because I can't remember specifics. But there was one time where I told you, I looked you in the eyes, and like, watch this. This is going to happen because of my bad luck. And right after I said that, that thing happened, and it was hard. I can't remember what it was though. I do remember you and I having a conversation a long time ago. Where we were like, things are too good right now. <laughs> and then, like, the next day, some very bad stuff happened. Yeah. Uh, but I think that, uh, well, here's the thing. I think maybe you have some bad luck, but I think you also have some really good luck. Yeah. Because. Or maybe the people around me are having the good luck, and I'm just, uh, I'm a parasitic fucking insect, and I'm feeding off of that success. And, and luck. Well, here, if you're worried about getting a motorcycle, because you're worried you're going to crash it. Motorcycles are wobbly, right? Two wheels. Get a yeah. sidecar, but it has balance. <laughs> then I can ride along too. I think they're I think they're tougher to drive with a sidecar. With a sidecar, really? Maybe I don't know. Because I figured that would balance. I, mean, I haven't it out driven one, a right? motorcycle. I would like to. You ever? You never driven one? I mean, if I don't buy a motorcycle, I'm 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 gonna buy a I'm gonna buy a firearm and just start doing doing some practicing like practice in my backyard. No, that's a lot. How I'm fast? Not how fast did the cops show up? If you just started shooting an assault rifle in your backyard, they wouldn't care. You know how many fireworks are going off lately? See, where that's it's like, okay, what's up with the fireworks shit? What's up with that? What's up with that? Oh wait, sorry guys. Um, here's here's a funny poo poo. Okay, okay, back that's to good. the back to the fireworks. Uh, fireworks. Ever since the George Floyd protests had begun. There's been this nationwide phenomena, ph phenomenon, phenomenon, yes, phenomenon, 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 uh, of, phenomenon dun, 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 of just fireworks going off nonstop every day. And I haven't seen them. I've only heard them. I've seen them like twice. Oh, I see them. But people, people say it's a conspiracy theory. People say it's, it's the police trying to desensitize us to gunshots. I think it's that since not a lot of people went out on Memorial Day and it's rearing up to be July 4th, all of... And that a lot of kids and people in general are stuck at home. Are stuck at home. I think that it's just kind of like a mixture of, hey, we have a bunch of fireworks. And now all of a sudden that it's a big thing. People are like, oh, now I'm that guy. I have a voice. I have my life has purpose. I have a meaning. <laughs> I am the fireworks guy in my neighborhood. Now. I, I, I can be a faint. <laughs> Let's play yeah. a Ryan McGee at 6 p.m. I can startle dogs. Dude. Lego hates fireworks, dude. He'll, oh, animals he'll, uh, hate fireworks. What? Animals hate fireworks. Yeah. I, I strapped some fireworks to the to the kittens, and they fucking hated it. <laughs> well, like Lego will just come in, and he'll just like dip his dip his head like like if I'm sitting playing a game, he'll dip his head in like my crotch and just bury his head in my crotch, <laughs> not in a sexual way. Well, they don't. I. I'm 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 the I'm the more sexually aggressive one when it comes to Lego and I's relationship. <laughs> he's more passive. He was just doing it because he's a scared boy. I, I think that like, I don't animals, want a Shane Dawson moment, so of course I have to just in case. 
Well, here's the thing about I'm the Shane Dawson I'm telling the truth. Stuff. There Shane is Dawson, nothing wrong with having sexual intercourse with your pet as long as the, they consent. And if you say animals can't consent, that's bullshit. They can consent. Of course, you're not legitimately, you know, engaging in, or maybe you are, but that's your personal life, and I'm not going to pry. Exactly. Um, just, just like, w I mean, gay people fought for their rights. Why can I fight for mine? <laughs> <laughs> Equating having sex with your dog to gay people. That's what southern people do. That's what my dad does. What's the next thing, huh? They're going to force us to marry or, or, or dogs? It's a slippery slope, right? Yes, Dale. They will put a dress on a dog, and they will have, they will... They will have a pastor at a church with a, at gunpoint. <laughs> Fuck that dog, Dale. <laughs> okay. No. Oh God. <laughs> but then, like, it's like five years later, Dale's getting up from bed. <sighs> Here's like the tippy taps of the dog paws. <laughs> oh, I, I smell bacon. Hey, baby, I didn't know you were sweetheart. making bacon so early. <laughs> God, I love you so much. God, I'm kind of in the mood this morning. <laughs> Smash cut five years from now. <laughs> There's gonna be some like video on Twitter of just this podcast clip. Like, wait a second, what did he say? Did, did they sexually molest animals? <laughs> no, gonna, we don't. Just our pets. Tweet it's like I did not fuck my dog. I did not come on my dog. <laughs> that, I had that tweet saved on my phone just because it's 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 just a, such a preposterous, hilarious. Like I did not fuck my cat. I did not come. I didn't put my dick anywhere near my cat. I'm pretty sure if like a human man fucked a cat, that cat would probably have some sort of internal injuries. Yes. Shane Dawson said he rubbed his penis on the cat until he ejaculated. Um, that's very possible. That's very possible. Yeah, especially if you use your like thumb or your hand to push weight on the top of your penis. So I'm not gonna. I, I'm I, only speaking from experience. I don't. I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> we should just move on. Um, I'm having too much fun with it. Uh, it's fun. It's fun. You just like I have too much fun with Lego sometimes. Okay, you were talking about <laughs> you were talking about your big purchase. Uh, um, motorcycle. Motor that's not gonna happen for a while, just because. I think my big purchase would be. But you can get them for so cheap. Yeah, motorcycles. You can get them for really cheap. Um, Especially man. just put a little small down payment on it, pay it off over time. I'd love to. Yeah. I'd love to get a moped. Motorcycles scare me. Motorcycles yeah. are like big boy. Mopeds. You can't. You can't drive a moped down the PCH. That's the thing. <laughs> but I'm. I would be too scared even to drive a motorcycle on the, on the PCH or the highway because when I was in when I was in Hawaii, I rented a moped for a week. The and. Wind. And I just, I just, I drove that on the, on the streets. You can't drive it on like the freeway, but you can drive it on the, I mean, you can't drive it on like the interstate, but I actually broke the rules once because I had, I had to, I had to get somewhere. And, uh, I got on like the, the bike lane and I went, and it was scary, but I will say it was very fun. But that day in Maui, it was incredibly windy and I kept feeling like I was about to fall off the moped. Very scary, but it was fun. I, I would love to get a moped, zip it around where I live. Sorry. I'm just a fuck, man. You okay? What's going on? My body's like, I don't know, you know when you're hungry, it just hurts, but I ate a good bit yesterday. I don't understand. Well, the key word in that is yesterday. Well, I mean, <laughs> food takes a bit to digest, and it should be like, I ate a bunch of trash yesterday, honestly. Well, the average person's I hungry like three, four times God a day. damn it, I'm falling back into it, man. I had a week without smoking a single cigarette, over a week without smoking a single cigarette. And then uh, I got a uh, I got a pack recently again. Oh no! Fuck me! And then I was doing well with my weight. Throw it out! Throw it out! I think I'm having like a Give it big relapse right now. Oh, it's easy. But it's now that I say it, I can stop it. Maybe. But that's the thing. It's it's easy to have a big relapse at once because you convince yourself it's like, oh well, I'm already I already smoked one cigarette. Oh, I already ate Dude, this. When I stopped smoking and was eating a tad better, I remember going to bed a lot easier, waking up naturally. This morning, I woke up to the sound of my alarm at like. God knows what time and I felt awful. I just like was dehydrated. I felt just not fucking good, man. I and, I, and I'm thinking it's like, hey, this is a wake up call. This is a this if if you run, this is God saying if you ever had a more obvious represent like a Venn diagram of of your situation, this is this is how close we're going to get to it. You need to recognize this shit, boy. And I go, haha, God, you're not real. And then he goes, fuck you, Ryan. And then he curses me with nicotine addiction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all God's fault in the end. It is God. You don't have to worry about it or be hold yourself accountable. Exactly. It's God's fault. I think that a good tip that I learned, and you know, I'm not someone to take advice from because I wake up at like 3 p.m. every day. Put a glass of water by your bed for when you wake up. And the very first thing when you open your eyes, sit up and just chug that water. 
Gets those systems. I did wrong. chug the water. I did chug some water. My problem was though that like, it, oh my god, I'm sorry for yawning through most of that sentence, but I think the problem. That's okay. Counteract it with a fart sound effect. Okay. There we go. Nice. I'm gonna I'm gonna love editing this one. <laughs> the problem is that it's a bunch of things in one. Sm back to smoking cigarettes, so it makes me. I think cigarettes in general just make you more anxious or prone to. Anxiety. Oh yeah, dude. When I was juuling. And when I would quit juuling, and then I pick it back up for a week or two, I would notice my anxiety, general anxiety, not like, it wouldn't be about anything specific. I would just feel more anxious, not as happy, but then things that would make me anxious would make me ten times more anxious. And that's simply just because you do get anxious when you are craving for a cigarette, but your brain may not know that, like, hey, I'm craving a cigarette right now, so you'll just be like, why am I anxious? And then you'll attribute that anxiety to something else. And then on top and of that, eating like, it. eating like shit wears you down and makes your stomach and heart feel shitty for the whole day. You're a machine. You Chest, gotta, what, what, the fuel you put in is what you get back out. I'm 26 and I can't be fucking around like that anymore. I can't get diabetes, dude. Fuck around like no, that. No, I can, but 22. I don't want to. I, that's like, I, I can't do it. Can't, I can't get it. I just can't. 22, it's easier to fuck around like that, I guess. I, I'm, actually, I'm starting to feel it at 24. Like My body is not uh, accepting the junk food and the alcohol the same it did at 21. I also had two ice cream cones yesterday and a big honey bun. Ooh, and Tapatio Doritos. It's a lot of sugar. And three bowls of cereal. As I said, it was a relapse. That, that sounds like a relapse. There's parts where I'm just like, like I'm, I'm I do well in eating, and then I'll have like I'm like I'm just gonna have like a small bowl of Rice Krispies, and then I have that sugar, and I'm like my body goes. It's a drug. It's just like I need sugar. I Sh need sugar salt. Sugar addiction is real. Give I mean, me, food addiction is real. Give me salt. Give, give me, me salt. sugar. I need my. Need satiated. At least you're looking good. You're looking good. You're looking thin. Thanks, man. You're looking way thinner than you did a couple months ago. <sighs> I still, I think, I think I, I, I was looking in the mirror and I came down to the, to the, to the fact that it's like I just hate my hips. I, I, I just need to get, get those little fatties off of my hips. And I those think those love handles. Those love handles. Yeah, ain't much loving going on with them though. Mm. I don't love them. What am no, I supposed nobody to do? I know loves them. What am I? I love them. What am I supposed to do next time we're together? So now, when they're gone and I and I'm and I'm happy with the way I look, you're gonna you're gonna miss my love handles. I'm gonna start like secretly. I'm like Ryan. I made us lunch and like <laughs> jack yours with butter. And try to get them back. <laughs> butter is the secret ingredient to making so many. Oh, dude, I made a I made a home just some homemade elote the other. Oh, it's so good. Ooh, elote. Ooh. Dude, I love a lot. I haven't had a so Boil long. that corn. You you slather some mayonnaise on it. Roll it in the I can't remember the name of the cheese, but it's a certain cheese that I grated and you, you know powdering. You roll it in the cheese. Put some hot chili powder on it. Oh my god. Ugh. Well, actually, first you do butter, mayo, roll it in cheese, red pepper, and then you can choose to put a little lime juice. Lime is yeah. Lime makes it. You but gotta god. have lime. I had because I, I miss a... corn man and I can't go out and get corn man, so I have to I have to make it myself. Which is still fine. I, I I forgot how. Sorry for interrupting no, you constantly, okay. but I forgot how amazing eating off of a cob was. It feels great, man. It's it feels so like primal, it's so juicy, it's crunchy. It's juicy. It's oh. like you, you might get it stuck in your teeth, but that's what God made floss for. Right? Exactly. I had I had hot Cheeto elote where it was rolled in crumbled up hot Cheetos. You know what? I'm gonna try that next time. It's pretty good. I'm gonna try it because I still have the cheese. I know what cheese I need to get, and then I'm go. I need to um. It's that real crumbly cheese, right? Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can oh, I can. I can actually look up the name. Hold up. Hold Case, up. Queso fresca. Matt. Matt. Uh, share a funny poop anecdote while I search for this. Uh, here's some ad reads. These days, it seems like companies are putting CBD in everything. If you don't know where to start, there's a company in Vermont that's down to earth and doing things differently. Sun soil. Uh, recently, Sun Soil was sweet enough to send us a little goodie bag, uh, and I got those CBD soft gels. And let me Ooh. tell you what, I was driving home from work one day, and I, I was a little bit stressed, and I said, you know what, to, to, to heck with this, I'm going to try one out. So I popped one of those CBD capsules in my mouth. Ooh, I had a nice relaxing evening, and since then, I have every few days been popping a CBD soft gel, because it's real nice, real relaxing. And for those of you that are scared of marijuana, it's not that. It doesn't get you high, it just relaxes you. Exactly. Sun Soil makes CBD oil that is USDA certified <laughs> organic. They grow hemp on their farms in Vermont, and they never use pesticides, herbicides, or GMOs. Sun Soil keeps it simple. In fact, most of their CBD products have just two simple ingredients, coconut oil and hemp. Sun Soil is surprisingly affordable because they farm their own hemp and stick to simple ingredients. They offer higher quality CBD at half the price of other brands. You know, Matt, you were talking about you, you use it for relaxing. You know, right before 
I start a nice whack off session. I like to cool my mind off so I'm not so aggressive and I accidentally cut my penis with my long fingernails. So I use CBD oil, calms me down and I stroke like a champ. Sunsoil makes pure and simple CBD products at an unbeatable price. Listen to this guys, what an incredible deal. Get 30% off your first order, that's 30% by going to sunsoil.com slash supermega. That's S-U-N-S-O-I-L dot com slash supermega for 30% off your first order. Again, that's sunsoil.com slash supermega. Links in the description. Get 30% off by using the code blah, 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 Wow, those were shitty. Get it? Because it's the poop episode? We're not calling the brand shitty or the ad read shitty. It's a joke because of the poop poo poo episode. Also, we didn't mention this. It's episode 199. You know what's next? 200. 200. Where apparently I have to tell a beer on story. The Oh, the Budweiser story. You know what I did there? Yeah. The Jamaican thing? Yeah. Jamaican man saying bacon. Yeah. It sounds like... Beacon. Sounds like he's saying beer can. What a... Beacon. No, you say beer can in a Jamaican accent. Beacon. Beacon. But it just sounds like bacon. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Something like that. Just like rise up lights. Sounds like an Australian man Rise up lights. Saying rise up lights. Get a phone call. Who's calling I'm me? Trying to find Mr. Oh, it's Joe Biden. He's calling me again. He will not, he will not stop calling me today. Motherfuckers. I text Joe and say stop. <laughs> oh, it's a. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. C O T I J A. C O T I. Cotija. 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 But there's no Cotija. There's no like accent. So it's like Cotija. Cotija maybe. Cotija. Well, Cotija. Cotija. I have not had it's anything that to today, and like, I want I want it. some elote now. That sounds great. It's, it's so fast to make. The only thing that where's take, the corn, Ryan? I don't know. I, I don't can, have any fucking corn you here. You can at the buy ears yourself. I already got two of them. Why would I buy some more? <laughs> <laughs> Put a far sound. Okay. Man, I um, I have an update on my kittens. They're all dead. Yep. Anyway, Stepped on all of them this. accidentally. You went, you went, oops, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I stepped out at night to get a glass of water. <laughs> and you kept accidentally stepping on one after the other. The worst thing is that has happened in reality to someone. They've killed like three kittens in a row by accident. There, by, well, there's people who have killed their kids by accidentally going reverse in their own driveway. Oops. <laughs> oops. <Oopsie. laughs> uh, but That's I, not an oops. <laughs> what do you mean oops? <laughs> oops, sorry, dear. Was, I'll be back. I'll be back at five. We can make another one. <laughs> I mean, they can. Yeah. So what's the big deal, right? Yeah. Um, we can basically. Uh, so so Mandy, the the mother of of the kittens, the five kittens I have right now that the skank. are skank. She is a skank. She was having a lot of sex and she gave birth to at a old, young age. A lot too. of different kittens. Yeah. So a little bit of a whore, if you ask me. But the time came for her to be adopted out because the kittens aren't supposed to be with their mama for too long, and she had been there long enough. Otherwise, they'll get mommy issues. Yeah, they'll become too attached, I think. Oh, interesting. Because uh, there's that whole thing where it's like, in nature, she would have been gone by now, and the kittens would have been off on their own. Mm-hmm. But she's still giving them milk, so that's going to keep them there longer and more, uh, I think just it causes issues. And she needs to be neutered, and she's going off to a ranch to go live the rest of her life with some other feral cats and chase mice. But it sounds like a euphemism for getting put down. She's not getting put down. She's, she, going she's actually a, going to a ranch Yeah, uh, that this, this company, they send feral cats off to different ranches. Uh, to live their life as little little barn cats um, and Mandy the morning came where I had to go take her down to like Long Beach to go Drop her off and I, I was sad and uh, she didn't know it was coming so I, I had to get her in the carrier mm-hmm. and um, Most people don't know this but feral cats don't like to be handled M- most well most people well the thing is most people do know that cats hate carriers So at least you have that starting point. Well, I tried to get her in the carrier uh, Cause she was all calm and I was just kind of like gonna like a little softly kind of like come on Kind of like push her butt a little bit She freaked out uh, She bit me and her fang went through my thumbnail All the way into my finger and then the opposite side of my thumb the soft side has three fang punctures in it And then I also have This nice scratch these teeth marks this right here. I learned at a young age that whenever I had to like put a cat in a carrier you either, <laughs> it sounds bad. What I what I did you as beat a, them until they're unconscious. No, I I I oh. just uh, take a towel, throw it over them, 
bunch them up in the towel, put them in the carrier, and they'd get they'd get all loose out of the towel. You know, I tried doing that, that. There's also wearing gloves slash kitchen mittens. I tried doing that stuff. She uh, did she take your mittens off? Well, I tried the mittens after the uh, after the initial <laughs> yeah. the, after my hands were covered in blood. I got her in after like 20 minutes. Harrison had to come out and like we had to like turn the table on its side and like create like a trap with like Can one. You not exit. just grab the back of her neck. I, I probably should have just <laughs> just tossed her, chuck her across the room into it. Uh, but we got her. She she went off. She's been spayed now. She's going to go live her life. So I have five kittens still. And within a week or two, they should be gone. And I am excited for them to go live their lives. Because they ruined your couch. They, I, I had to call they the city. They ruined your bed. I Yep. I Okay, so I had to get rid of my mattress. I had to call the city to come pick up my mattress. And normally it's like, why would you get a whole new mattress? Because a cat peed on it. Mandy peed on it. And it was probably. Cat peed is not something you can just deal with it was it was about a two foot wide stain right where i lay my head at night <laughs> and i didn't find it until about a day later so at that point it, it saturated it soaked in you where were you for a day where you weren't in your room drug stuff the drug oh. trading um Got but it. basically she peed so i'm like i have to get rid of this now i couldn't clean it up uh and then she ruined my couch so i had to call the city to come pick up the couch so now my living room is completely barren except for fold folding chairs <laughs> So I'm I'm waiting for the kittens to be gone just so I can get a couch and have my living room back and not smell like cat piss because I got an air freshener, I changed out the air filters in my house, got rid of the couch, I got air the little Glade plug-in things because I do not want the house to smell bad and it smells much better now. Mm -hmm. um, and soon when you come over to work on our secret project, you'll you'll notice I have furniture again and and it won't smell like cat piss. I'm excited. I just feel bad because of the fleas I have. You're not bringing them over. No. And if you are, they'll go to the kittens and then they'll go to someone else's <laughs> exactly. house. Exactly. So you don't have to worry about it. Exactly. You know? Well, the thing about, like, the place I live is I don't let Lego in, like, uh, so, like, I have, like, the quote-unquote den, right? That's, I guess, for me, the den is the living room, the, com the computer office, and... Uh, a place where I can do some workouts. A masturbation as, room, too. Yeah, sure. It is. I mean, I do ma I masturbate in, in every room. So, yeah. Every but, room? The kitchen. I don't think I've masturbated. Laundry room? Well, the kitchen is, the kitchen's conjoined with a living room, a quote unquote living room space. That's where just like, but Lego there's the is. tile that set, I would say the tile is where it separates the rooms. Cause even yeah. though it's not a wall, there's a, have you masturbated in the kitchen before? No. Living room. I've never had sex in the kitchen either. Really? Yeah. We can change that, can we? I, I, I usually that those acts uh, are either in the den or the uh, bedroom. So, okay, cool, or on the roof, That's but so not like on the roof, like in like kind of like under the like in the attic area. Mm, it's still the roof. Well, I don't area. have an I don't have an attic. There's just a hole in my ceiling that you can crawl into. It's covered up with a trash bag. Yeah, so you can hear it flapping around at night. Sometimes it just gets you in the mood, and you got to go up there and release those demons. Yep. Yeah. What were you saying? I actually forgot. About what? Exactly. You were saying something about the fleas, the fleas. Yeah, I just don't want to bring fleas over. And oh. I'm fucking sick and tired of them. Give brought, them the cats. I, that was the first anecdote in this in this podcast was the fleas. Uh, yeah. I'm still fucking dealing with them. Fleas I don't know. suck. I have, I have a couple of flea bites, actually. I have like one or two. Where? My ankle. Right now? Mm-hmm. So. They're old. They're really old, though. But they last for like two weeks. Ah, uh, do they itch for two weeks? How long do flea bites itch for? A long time. They mosquito bites will be gone in a few days. Flea bites will be there for like two weeks. I can never weeks. tell if it's a mosquito or a flea at first. But flea bites are hard, and so, also so they, are mosquito they bites. bleed real easy. Mosquito bites well up. Yeah, but flea bites feel like there's like something actually under your skin. It's like a, like a like a welt. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of uh, omens lately. It's been scaring me about oh the like the headless snake. Yeah, that's one. So I, I keep seeing coyotes. I saw one daylight. coyote essentially just have a cat or small a animal, raccoon in its or mouth. something. Yeah. So like, it's a big small animal. Two times now, I've gone for a walk and I'll leave my house, and the second I'm walking out, there's just a coyote in my driveway, just walking by, just minding his own business. Like, hey. Two I times, st I still haven't seen a coyote. And then I saw one walking by with a huge animal in its mouth. But every single time, the coyote stops and looks at me and tries to get me to like follow it. Almost, it's like. It like stops and waits for me like an NPC. And I'm like, that's weird. And I read about it that coyotes are spirit guides and they want you to follow them. So I was like, whatever. Then Or I, it's keeping its eye on you to make sure you're not following it. No, it's a spirit guide. Okay. And then I saw a metallic balloon floating away in the sky while driving on the highway. And I was Is like, that that's an weird. omen? Later in the day, 
other side of LA, I saw the same thing again, a balloon floating away. And I was like, oh shit, that feels like an omen. And then on the way to work today, I see a big ass metallic balloon stuck in a tree. And I was like, shit, this is some kind of omen. And then I was taking the trash out the other night and I found a headless snake squirming around. No head, like cut clean off. Something came, uh, probably a cat came and- Just clean off. And I was like, oh, a headless snake. That sounds like a bad omen. But it looked like it was, honestly, what you sent me, it looked like just a tail of a lizard. It was a it was a snake. I I, I squatted down and I was like, whoa, because I thought it was an earthworm at first. Mm-hmm. It was a little snake. Okay, I want to get a snake. A little corn snake. I want to get a little corn snake, snake or a little uh the little green ones. Yeah, I can't tell if I want a green one or if I want a garden snake. I like the corn snakes. Corn snakes are cute. They're so they're I, simple I see them pets. all the time. I, I used to. God, Riverbank Zoo. They're still do, dude. Riverbank Zoo has like a like a like a seal show habitat looking thing now. What I think. You fucking with me? I went, I went like, yeah, it's the most recent zoo I've been to, and I don't go to zoos all the time. Yeah, they, they've done a lot of work on Riverbank Zoo. I love R- Riverbank Zoo. Isn't it, like, the biggest or most popular tourist attraction in Colombia or some shit like Probably. that? Probably. Big- I imagine the state house is not is is not more popular than the zoo. No. <laughs> the zoo, the Riverbank Zoo is, is such a great zoo. It's in South Carolina. It's in the capital. They got gorillas. They got gorillas. They got bears. They got bears. They seals. Got lions, tigers, oh my. They got kangaroos or the little tiny kangaroos that you can now go into a cage and walk through this little trail and you can go see them and they're hopping around. It's wallabies? Shit. Yeah, yeah, wallabies. I think. Wallabies are so cute. I went to that, when I went to that monkey thing up 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 north, I got to pet a wallaby, and I was standing there taking a picture. And one ran right between my legs, real fast. Can you believe we just have fresh Tims still? I'm I'm looking at them. It's a it's a lot. One, two, three. I think we have like two other I think pairs. We have like too. five pairs of Tims. It's crazy. They're expensive too. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So actually, fun fact: when Ryan and I record this podcast, in between us is a table, and underneath the table is a little rack that's just filled with Tims. So every word of this podcast has to cross over a layer of Tim's to get to the other person first. So in a, in a way, you could say the Tim's are very ingrained. That's a fucking fly again, dude. A fucking fly. We're still in the... Gee, I went right by my face. We're in the fly era of the podcast right now. Still. It, it hasn't died down. So for those of you, key, those super mega historians that are making a chart of uh, eras of the podcast and sagas, we're still in the fly, fly saga. It's ending, though. It's coming I know. to an end. Uh, there's only one fly in here. And I haven't seen Rupert, that spider, around anywhere either. No, oh, he's hiding. He's hiding or... or he's, hiding, he's hiding somewhere. The flies might have overpowered his ass. You know? You ever think about that? No. Oh, sorry. Sh- You're just so boring. Yeah, I know. I understand. Ugh. I haven't told that before. <laughs> hey, Ryan, I gotta go grab a drink real quick. Put some fart sounds in. <laughs> And I'm back. Thank you for the fart sounds, for the poo poo sound. Of course, my man. Of course. You've been uh, watching any any good YouTube lately? Because I always see, every time we do a Q&A on Patreon or just in general, I see people say, what are y'all's favorite YouTube channels? So I figured, let's let's get this out in the open so also we can get some more eyes on some of these epic channels, even uh, though some of them are a lot bigger than us. Um, One channel that I've been, hold, let me, let me pull, hold, let me pull it up <gasps> real quick. Wait, real quick? Can I, can I? Throw something in? Yeah. Remember a couple podcasts ago when I, we were talking about, I think 197, we're talking about old YouTube channels. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I mentioned that there was this one YouTube channel that only had like a thousand subscribers that I loved watching but was never able to find. Okay. People reached out to, they found the guy and got him to email me. So we got in touch and we've been talking. The guy that had that small YouTube channel that I looked up to when I yeah. was doing Format 24. And I was just blown away. And I looked at his Instagram to confirm it. It is him. Oh, talking about that. People figured out uh, the... Oh, my God. I'm so happy. Someone figured out uh, the the duo that I was talking about, the com- the comedic duo. One of the guys actually apparently is on SNL right now. Whoa. Yeah. it's uh, They used to be called Nobody's Watching. Okay. So that's why I couldn't remember the name because it's just one of those things where I couldn't tell. But it's it was called Nobody's Watching. I think most of the videos they they have done, uh, I can't really find them. I can find like shitty quality versions of them, but I can't find like they they used to have like I remember what, following their saga because they were doing a they were the whole they had this whole bit where they were making a show and the whole point of the show was that they were making a show. I think mm. so. I, it's crazy. You guys are wild. That. 
I could you just found that shit. That was I so know, cool. and then I could just mention like, yeah, I watched this guy with like a thousand subs back in like 2009, and then his channel disappeared. And you guys somehow just from what I said were able to fucking find the guy and link him up with me. Cause I, I got an email that was like, hey Matt, this is a uh, this is Adam. I heard you were talking about me on your podcast. Apparently, uh, does he still do stuff? Uh, he's like a he, he he went to art school. He made a feature, moved around a lot, started a freelance film business. That's what he said on Instagram to me. Uh, yeah, we were just talking recently and catching up. That was. Super cool, but back to the YouTube channels. Yeah, uh, one that I I kind of have enjoyed watching. <clears throat> um, it's a YouTuber by the name of Cass Aris. Uh, I think they are not a. I don't know. I can't remember. They, they're psychologists of some kind, and they talk about mental health, and they talk about uh, different issues and things, and they have and they tell stories and anecdotes, and I and I and it's very also their voice is super calming. Uh, to listen to that's the best so uh, I, I really have been enjoying that channel she she has what what is it she has like 7.86 thousand subscribers Ooh. but I'm subscribed and I and I love watching her stuff and I think she has a lot of uh, good information to share and a lot of good insight to be shared as well yeah I a lot of my favorite channels are really small ones um, because there's there's so many in a time when YouTube seems like it's just consumed by like the Paul brothers yeah. and all that shit, well, Jake Paul saying he's he's been shadow banned or something like that. I wouldn't be surprised. But also at the same time, he makes so much money. I don't for know the, if shadow banning is a thing that YouTube does for channels. I, but I, I think that he also makes them so much money. Yeah, you know, he makes them. YouTube takes fifty percent. I'm pretty sure fifty percent's the cut or some shit like that. If he, if he if for some reason he's making unfortunately 20 million this year instead of 22 million, my heart goes out to you, Jake. <laughs> I really like I've been I've been into spooky YouTube a lot, mm -hmm. but I don't I like I'm not like one of those true crime white girls, but I really do like uh crime. I like mysteries. And incidents. There's a lot of podcasts around you that I'm surprised you're not into. I haven't listened to any podcasts because they're a big commitment. But what I like, I've never been a huge podcast guy because it's always like, oh, it's, a, it's an hour of my time. No, well, I, I don't even see it as a, like an hour of my, it's it's like if I'm doing something, I can have it on like I would music. Same. Well, I would love to listen to more podcasts. I just don't know. I haven't done research. I don't know. There's a shit ton of murder doing. mystery podcasts out there. It's like, I think one of the more famous Genres True crime podcasting. podcasts are huge. They're the biggest ones, I think. But the thing is, I don't. Uh, I'm not super into just like murder stories. I like weird shit. So I like Nexpo. I'm sure a million of you guys follow him because uh, he's actually gotten really big lately. He's getting like he'll upload a new video has 1.5 million. Yeah, so he's big now. But he does. I think you would love him, Ryan. He just picks creepy topics like like disturbing things from 4chan or like. Uh, he has a series called Disturbing Things from Around the Internet, but he does volumes of, they're like 30 minutes each. Where Very much in the same vein of, uh, to YouTube. Yeah, that guy. Name he, of Matt Same Watson. vein. But he's, he's, he's really good. Uh, there's a channel called Horror Stories that this guy is just so cookie cutter, not cookie cutter, he's just very like, he's so plain. He doesn't like, hey guys, welcome to the video. He just starts, mm -hmm. reads like a Wikipedia article and then ends it. So it'll be like, hold on. A man named Suprianto was pulled down and drowned in the crocodile-filled waters of the Indonesian... <laughs> and his video's only like a minute long, so he'll just talk about like an incident from Wikipedia and then be like, he won't even say like, thank you, goodbye, it's like, and he died, into the video. Dude, I can, so, so essentially it's like, you're, does he have his own script or is he just reading like I think it's the, his own script, okay. but I'm, I'm, but he also includes like videos and pictures along with it, mm -hmm. and there's not usually like any music or anything. But he does stories about like. But is it like pictures where it's like when he's talking about an alligator, he shows a picture of like a Google Images alligator? Uh, it's it more like, like this. Like he's talking about this actor and like <laughs> his suicide. I like so how just simple show, like, it is. No, that's why I love his channel because his voice you is don't so. Need things to be just bright and bombastic and shit. Just get like getting to the point and making it simple is sometimes the best course of action. Yes, but I found some more channels like that that are just kind of like they report on just like mystery stuff because mm -hmm. I was reading about some weird. I'd love to talk about this more on the podcast, like these weird, I don't want to be a true crime podcast, but there are some really interesting cases that just leave so much up to be questioned. Like, uh, I read one about in the, I think it was Rocky Mountain Wilderness in the Rocky Mountain National Park. This kid was playing on the edge of the woods on a hike and then just went missing. And, uh, they went all through the woods. They couldn't find him ever. And he's been missing for over 50 years, 
But then there was another family, like 10 minutes later, in another part, kind of nearby that was taking a hike and they saw like what they thought was like a, a man with like a child on his back and the mm-hmm. child was like screaming and he was like running with it and they never figured out what happened. And then the FBI came in and like shut down the investigation, I think, and like wouldn't give anyone any answers. And, the, and they had Green Berets come in and shit too. And like, it's just this weird mystery where it seems like authorities were really trying to hide something and the dad never got an answer. Closure or anything yeah. like that. And um, there's just a, you should look it up. I forgot what it's called. But it's it's on the horror stories channel. Okay. Um, but it's it's just this weird ass mystery where it's like this kid goes missing, but then there's so much more to it where there's just so much like what happened to him. It's interesting. And there's all these weird little tidbits and the FBI uh, throwing out information and stuff, I and mean, then like bringing in the military. And the park rangers were saying that like there are groups of people that live in the wilderness, like in America, like in the Rocky Mountains and stuff, that are like fully off the grid, uh, not adapted to modern society at all like they like wear pelts and shit and they cannot they're like a lost cause like they can't well, be feel like it's controlled the, it's the same people that are not in the same way but it's uh like the amish there are people who just live a, a different way and well, they, i'm sure there's a lot of people who still live that frontier life i don't think these people even well these people like it's not like they made a choice to it's like they're born into it they don't even have a house like they just live in the woods and wear like animal pelts interesting which is really interesting in modern day but they were saying that it could have been one of those people or because one of those people attacked a park ranger once and mm-hmm. almost like killed him because he ran into him and you know i don't even think they could speak just a rabid dude yeah essentially um, which I wonder if, if that's what a lot of sightings of Sasquatch are, because there are those people man. that live there that wear animal furs and stuff. And if you saw like a huge dude in the woods wearing animal furs running like around, a bear I pelt. A, yeah. I think it's a Sasquatch. Like, like a six foot dude wearing a bear's pelt. I'd be terrified. <laughs> no I'd be more what. scared of that than Bigfoot. I feel Bigfoot. I'd be like, Oh, he's just. You know, I don't know. Bigfoot thing. would have ape strength, like gorilla strength times 10. Every time I'm camping, I start thinking about Bigfoot and I'm like, that's so stupid. But I'm like, fuck, I'm scared now. Whoa. Like just hear, you just hear that echoing. Just <gasps> what was that? I, I was sleeping on a hill once, like not at a campsite, like just backpacking with my dad. And we just went off the trail and pitched a little tent. And I was just like, fuck, man, like. We're off you pitched grid. a tent with your dad? I did pitch a tent with my dad. It's nice. And I ended up writing a song about it's it. Good too. memory. Uh, but basically I. I, I there was late at night just things things echo through the woods when you're deep in the woods and you'll just hear like ah! some shit like miles away and I I get it like the woods full of animals they're gonna do animal it's, shit it's, I think it's necessarily because you can't pinpoint what exactly it is that or leaves, where it is that leaves your mind open to interpretation and thus that it's whenever you fill in the blanks it's it's the same reason why we talk about it's connected in a sense it's it's the same reason why we don't or at least I don't like doing um, face cam for Let's Plays because I feel like just having our voice lets people's imaginations kind of fill in the blanks of what our facial expressions are, if we're being deadpan, if we're being overenthusiastic. Yeah. I, th- I think, uh, I don't know, just, just giving people like a little bit of room of interpretation kind of uh, adds some breath to what you're doing. Yeah. They, they but in it- this sense, it's in a... Uh, Scary way. Scary way. Well, that, well, actually, interesting what you're saying about that is is when you have our faces, they're given all the information they need to know exactly how to react. But if it's just our voices, their brain has to fill in the rest. Yeah. And I think that's where it, it there's a lot more uh, – your brain can get a lot more creative with like are we just chilling on the couch in a dark room? Are we like you know sitting in office chairs? Are we fucking like – have our hands on each other's backs. Also, I feel like our kissing. our our bits. We can we can be a more uh, we can be more imaginative within our bits. Oh yeah, they work way better with just audio. There's a place for face cam. There like is, but we're never gonna do just stuff. face cam let's no, plays. No, that's no, no. that's not our style. <laughs> We've made it this. We made over four years just doing non face cam let's plays. And a lot of people do want the podcast to switch over to video, and that's something that we've never made our mind up on. We're open to it. We still don't know it yet, though. Yeah, I mean, at this point, what approaching episode 200 next week and it's like we would get that. would would we would uh be doing well because then we'd be able to make a clips channel yeah people would see our faces and be like oh i want to see these people talk about things because i do i do understand like i would much rather when i'm searching through youtube watch a video of two people talking about certain than things an audio clip then yeah than an audio clip but my thing also is and you agree fully with me on this is uh okay 
<laughs> anyway, so there, there's there's basically two races. <laughs> no, uh, is that I don't know. We've kind of always done it this way, and yeah, I'm sure if we did the video podcast, it would get more views. But I don't know. We we've never really been one of those channels that's big into like doing what gets views. We've yeah, kind of just always done what we want to do. We, we're I, I'm I would say I am 100. percent even though I've filmed embarrassing shit in public before, I'm more comfortable recording a podcast with just the voice. Because then, like, if the camera's there, I have to think about, like, how I'm sitting. And we're self-conscious like, dudes. Then then that adds the whole thing of where, like, I'd look into the camera for jokes and I'd be more aware of, like, a viewer. Where, like, if there's no camera, like, w- when there's a camera, uh, it's kind of like a stand-in for the viewer. You know that, like, something's watching you. But when we're having a podcast, we know that we're recording just it and, and we're being performative. But I can scratch uh, my nuts. It does leave room and it leaves instances where you and I will get into discussion and it's not just like playing it up for the podcast sake. It's like we just get invested in a discussion and I kind of forget I'm recording a podcast and I just want to and I'm just talking with you. Yeah, exactly. And I really uh, I also feel like if we did video, we'd start to rely too much on visual bits. And Mm -hmm. then the people that have listened to audio only for 200 episodes would start to feel like it's changing. Yeah. You know? Where it's like, hey, look at this video. Uh, I'm gonna pull up this video. Real yeah, quick. and then people that are just listening are like, oh, this isn't the same podcast I used to like because yeah. it's there's a lot of factors. But I think at the end of the day, just we're doing what we find comfortable and we're doing uh, what we feel is what right for with. yeah, exactly what we're happy with. You know, we don't want to like cop as a, you. You've seen us. We've we've experimented before with the talking show. I mean, we we do experiment and we do try things. It's just that if it doesn't gel, we're not gonna push it forward any farther than we feel like it deserves. Yeah, because I feel like we've also reached a point after five, six years of, of just our channels and all this stuff. I, I think that we're at a point where we have a, a group of people that follow us and enjoy our content and know us as creators really well. And I think that uh, we don't f- feel like we have to do stuff just for clicks because really like when we do this podcast, it's like the people listening care and the people listening like what we're saying uh, for the most part. But I, I think that uh, we're comfortable with that, knowing that we have a, an audience mm-hmm. and, and growing the audience is always something we want to do, but it's not our main concern. We kind of want to just like keep living our lives and hanging out, but then sharing these discussions that we have with each other with the people that actually care and want to listen. I'm kind of like with you like i'm past the whole excitement over growth like i still i i still find it overwhelming when i see the amount of people that's supporting us whenever we hit a milestone that's great but that's not that used to be what the channel kind of that that was kind of like the adrenaline rush the drug you know you'd make the content to to see the reaction and then see it spread and see other people connect with your content and your style of humor and which still does that, give you a little high no that still gives you a high but like the since the growth isn't as exponential, it's not the the main. It's not one of the main reasons I draw um, positivity through what I'm doing. Yeah. Like I, I I now just like recording the podcast and going in and recording the games I want to play. I it, there was a part of us that you know was playing the game to grow in some instances, um, like some of the games we choose to play, and I feel like. Uh, I'm more comfortable choosing games that we want to play instead of going after all the surgeon simulators and all that, or that, like the toast game or whatever the fuck that was called. <laughs> I think that for both of us, the most important thing with Super Mega is we want to create something that feels like us, like genuine and real. Like I, I know that there's a million channels where it's like just two dudes hanging out on a couch. Yeah. that That's what I genuinely, I don't want to emulate though. I don't. I don't want to emulate that feeling. I want to. I don't want to have a set that's a couch and like a TV and everything. And that, that we're not. I'm not trying to masquerade a set as this ideal of two friends on a couch. I want to. I want to continue. Want to be to just. Yeah, exactly. I want to. I want to continue to be your friend, talking with you and playing video games, sitting on a couch and shooting the shit. Because yeah, that's the thing. It's like I don't want to. I don't want to just. And working on some special projects. Some special projects. I because, mean, but that's what's so fun about it is because we actually are like best friends. That when we work on these special secret projects, we have. When you came over there and worked, I had a fucking blast. I oh, can't yeah. wait for you to come over again and work on it. Like we are working on some big shit, but I don't want to just be masquerading two friends on a couch as like that's the theme of the show. I just want it to actually be two friends on a couch. Yeah. And if we ever stopped being friends, we wouldn't keep doing super mega. No. It makes good money and shit, but like. 
we wouldn't be happy doing it anymore. We like if we weren't friends, we would. So I, I the conspiracy theory is like they hate each other. It's like if we hate each other, we would not be doing super mega anymore. Yeah. We would, like, we would do then, other shit. No, you need the money though. So that one could say that financially you would stay. It's like yeah, 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 yeah. But like, I'd I, be happier with less money. Uh, than forcing myself to do a show with someone I don't like. Yeah, you know, or like, like just don't connect with well and feel like, like we trying have to, to force, force ourselves. A connection, yeah, trying to force ourselves to keep making a show when we don't have a connection or don't want to. That makes me more depressed than having less money. The channel's still very much just I'm making content with my friend, and I want it to stay that's, that way. I don't ever is. want it to change. It's all the channel's ever been, and yeah, we we have made mistakes and done some probably we've made some questionable jokes or had some questionable views. I never have. Or, sure. Just you. <laughs> just me. No, I definitely but, have. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. It's just a, just a, just a journey. And I, I, and I, this, and I like viewing it as a journey. That's exactly how I see it. I don't want to see this as like a channel, like a business. It is a business, but I don't want to see it as like, I want, because I know Super Mega won't be around forever. There no. will come a day where we decide to pull the plug and say goodnight. I think that, it's inevitable. What what I want from Super Mega is I don't want it to become this this weird like new hosts or like if we like let's say we just replace Matt and Ryan with like two new younger dudes and like, and like where, where it's I want like, it to be ours that where it's, it's a like journey. Super Mega is a brand no when it's like no 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 Super Me Super Mega is a brand but okay ha, ha, I'll bring it up the reason we quit like i stopped doing syndigo was because of you know daniel passed away and right. daniel daniel's personality was a huge part of syndigo it was so it was the it two made, of you it yeah, was it was you guys it, it, it made sense to stop it because that same energy and voice it's not the same it's different it's not syndigo it's something else and that's why i joined kids with problems that's why eventually uh we had we had kind of the same issue with that and we developed super mega because super find, mega like, a unique voice super mega is a brand but it's a it's 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 the brand that allowed us to consolidate who we are into something new that it wasn't based on anything else yeah yeah and you know I, I think that basically I want to be able to look back at Super Mega and not be like, oh, that was a good company we had. Like, I want to be like, I want to be able to like lay in bed and watch old videos. It's more about like, the memories cry. we had. Yes, while the memories. Yeah. Yes. I want it to be like, that was a fun fucking journey I had with my friend in my 20s. Like, that yeah. was the fucking life. Like, that was awesome. You remember going out and filming that? That was yeah, so exactly. much fun. Because uh, there were, there are points where it's like, we have to, where we start filming a vlog and I don't know, I just like. We're not like into it. And so like I started to be like, oh, are we just filming this to create content? Because we used to like that. That used to be the point. Yeah, you're filming to create content. But we'd also just it was just about us hanging out, filming our, each other, having a good time and then yeah. messing with it in post and editing. And that I, I think, honestly, that's a reason why, you know, we've talked about filming vlog. We have filmed the multiple vlogs, but. I'm, I'm sure some of them will be, be released, but some of them I had. I did have that feeling of. Are we uh, like, are, is, is it just because we need content? We feel forced yeah. to film this because that's the thing is I don't want to just <clears throat> people want live action. And I know that uh, we're, we're, I guess, to qu quote, quote unquote, we're, we're good at producing it, <clears throat> but we're both very self-conscious about it. And also it's like we don't want to just create live action content to create because our live action content, like our Japan vlogs and stuff like that's us genuinely having fun. And I don't want to just be. A YouTube channel that's like just pumping out cringy videos. Yeah. So people say like, "Where's the live action?" It's not that we're lazy. Well, okay. Uh, there, there. We is are a, a little bit lazy. There's but, a part that's but lazy. There's a lot more to it than just that. There's an easy there there there's an easy argument to be made, you know, against for us be against us for being lazy in terms of that with with not having to do that struggle and building the channel, you build a, you build a sense of complacency, which, um, in that can brew, um, a creative, a creative deficit. And I think that I, I, I personally have been experiencing a huge lack of creativity. And yeah. I don't think that's necessarily because we're not, you know, fighting to build this channel. I, 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 I honestly have to align it with just where I am mentally in, my, yeah. in terms of like mental health or it just comes, kind of goes. like with the overarching um, COVID stuff. Um, there's also excuses of just, yeah, there there are days and weeks where I feel lazy as fuck. And like I let's be real, guys, we're we're a 26 and 24 year old stoner 
<laughs> yeah. duo. We're gonna feel like we're not like these heads of business like a lot of other big YouTubers are. We're like running companies. Like <laughs> we're, we're still like we'll fucking sleep until three p.m. Like we're literally just like college students essentially <laughs> that got lucky with a YouTube channel. Yeah. So we're not like business CEOs. Maybe on paper, but and like we never want it to feel like a business. I don't and that want seems to seem spoiled, corporate. right? That's. I mean, I can understand why people would be upset because they're. There are a lot of people and, you know, we used to work in the field where you have to get up and you have to work and you have to work. You have to be dropping merch every week. You have to you, you have to do all these things. Um, and then at the end of the day, like, say we're working for our Chick-fil-A or Food Lion. At the end of the day, the money that we earn from that just doesn't feel justified in the amount of work we might have put into it. So it just it develops into this kind of this this sinking feeling and. I'm glad that we're able to do what we do and I and I and I recognize the luck and the and the amazing support that you guys have brought to us but mostly luck that we are able to have quote unquote jobs that allow us to act in a in a more irresponsible way I guess you know we don't because have we don't have to set alarms every day of the week we don't have, have to, to work at nine to five if i if i had stayed through college and and gotten a job i wouldn't be sleeping until 3 p.m yeah <laughs> you know i'd be getting up at like 7 a.m every morning working a job i hate so i i feel so so we're we're spoiled lucky we are spoiled yeah. in that fact but again the the type of content we make like there's there is that fear of well if we do start to put certain things in place and we do, you know, like we do have work weeks and we do have work days, but it's not like we have to meet from here to here every day of the week. It's more of, you know, when we're both woken up, we'll text each other, reach out, be like, hey, are you ready to meet? And then we'll, sorry, I just saw a cute fucking squirrel run by the window. Anyway. <laughs> 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 Did you see my eyes? <laughs> like, follow it. Like, <laughs> but, um, no, there's, there's, um, oh, where was I? What was I saying? That's, Waking up and, and texting to meet every day. Yeah, you know, there. You don't want to set a precedent. There, there's, there's, the fear that when it becomes a business, in a in setting up the times and the specific work days and having you know getting up early. Not only that, but then hiring more people and making it more of a, like clockwork in term, or I guess more of a an assembly line in in means of making content. When it when it starts to feel like that, that's when the two guys sitting on a couch starts to wither away. Yeah, it's and this, it loses its soul. It, and I think one thing is... is I so think, we have to be lazy, guys. It's it's part of our creative <laughs> magic. <laughs> See? No, I, I think that... Uh, but but I, I do... I think that one way it's interesting is like... I think that we have kept uh, the soul of Super Mega alive still four years later. Like, I still feel like four years in, it, it still feels as as genuine. And despite the growth, despite whatever, like, I feel like we do, you know, because we are being genuine. It's We're not trying to feel genuine. We're being genuine. We're well, being I, ourselves. I also feel like we haven't, like, I don't know, we, we don't unnecessarily flood the market with, like, our content or uh, merch or all that shit. Like, I'm not... Like I'm not trying to, to, I am trying to make money and I'm trying to be comfortable, but I'm not trying to make as much money as humanly possible. Well, if we wanted to, and like, I, and I and, well, I want to get back into merch and stuff, but like, I've just seen arguments where it's like, oh, I guess it's this is, it, that this goes into reading negative comments, which we've talked about endlessly. But it's like, oh, they're now that they have money, they 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 don't want to do it anymore, and they're. They just uh, are just taking their money and kind of running with it and being lazy. And I use I use it in that voice because I believe that that's untrue because I don't feel like that. I don't feel no, like we're not like that. I still like and enjoy making content. Do I do do I enjoy uh, making let ha, would I enjoy having to record Let's Plays to where we would have to post two a day? No, I wouldn't enjoy that. So I'm not going to do it because here's the thing. Like, let's be real. If Ryan and I wanted to be millionaires in two years, we probably could. We could record two Let's Plays a day. Okay, Tyler we, Blevins. I'm just saying. <laughs> if we wanted, like, but the thing is, like, if we released merch every week, if we did two Let's Plays a day, if we, if we, we got could. on, if we did live streaming. But we don't. We did all these things. Because it doesn't, as, as much as a million dollars sounds awesome, it's like, I don't want to burn myself out and I don't want to not, in, I don't want to not enjoy this process with you. I don't want it to be, because I think you and I are both of the mindset where it's like, 
what we're making now is comfortable. Mm -hmm. We don't need to be making. Uh, yeah, it would be great, but it's like it would be great to have eight Teslas in my garage. Yeah, that'd be fucking awesome. In my two a, garage, a stacking and... garage that can cycle out my sports cars. Exactly. But it's like, do we need that? No. And I think the level of money and uh, the support. I think more importantly, the support we receive uh, from you guys is is so much more than a typical channel with 800,000 subs. And I think that is one of the things that just keeps us so grounded and keeps us going because it's like, fuck, there's so many cool people out there. More people than should be supporting us for a channel of our size because there's channels with 20, 30 million subs yeah. that don't have a fan base like Super Mega. They, oh, dude, our Which fan is why it's wild to me. Yeah. So it's like, I guess we did something right, but I don't want to ever give that up and just become a generic channel just to make a lot of money. I like what we're doing now, and we do get lazy sometimes. Like I'll admit that, and we miss uploads a lot. But I also don't want to set the precedent that it's like we're gonna upload every day. We're gonna always have content out because no, at the end of the day, we're living our lives. We're living our twenties, and we're going to keep making content. But sometimes, like, we're gonna focus on ourselves and just not upload for a bit. Yeah, and that doesn't mean our content's any less good. That doesn't mean we're shitty people because there is this quality that's expected on YouTube with like every day that's being uploaded this time. That's yeah. not super mega. It was maybe at, at some points like we in the beginning when we yeah. were just putting out videos as much as possible, and that was a great fun beginning journey. We're never just I gonna had. ditch super mega. So if we stop uploading for a couple of days, don't get scared like oh we're losing interest. Just we're dealing with our lives. We got our own mental shit. We're just just remember whatever that that time in life exists out of the content that you hear on super mega. So like our existence isn't just, we're not trapped inside our YouTube channel. Like there are hours and days where like, we're not working on super mega. Like you would think of a weekend uh, or just, I, I don't know, after we're done recording, you know, I go home, I drive in traffic and I sit there and I listen to music and then I get home and I pet Lego and, and I, you know, rest with him for a bit. Then I feed him. I go outside and let him run around. Then I go in, then I go back inside to make some food. You know, there's, it's like we are humans that have lives and we do, we, we do a bunch of things other than our create content and think about creating content. We have a uh, family shit. We got, you know roommates to deal with fucking tough friendships brothers. you know friendships, it's just yeah. i mean I, I mean not to mention like personal anxieties personal anxiety depression ocd wh whatever like there there's a whatever lot. excuse will make you guys forgive us and, and keep watching <laughs> <laughs> now there's just a lot i think people people don't i think especially with big youtube channels people don't see it as as people they see it as and, and i think it's What's easy this? to dehumanize themselves because it becomes such a routine scheduled uh we're not asking for much guys we're asking for you to play truck simulator once a week okay it's not much one let's play okay one let's play a week <laughs> sure <laughs> no uh but recent so you know obviously we've said this recently we've we've been burnt out the past few months and we are starting some new big projects that feel fucking awesome we we're excited one project uh, in particular one project in particular where i i i, I was telling matt I told Matt, and and we're going to stick to this, I told him, this isn't a project that I want, because there have been projects that we've been talking about that kind of fall, like, back in, to the wayside, you know? Yeah. This is a project where I'm like, I want to come over to your place and work on this. Like, use use super mega work days, because Monday through Friday are days that we right. are, like, we have to do something for super mega, whether it's a business conversation, whether it's recording whatever it is something for super mega has to this has to be involved in that in that week or day um and i i say at least two or at least one day out of that work week all we do for that day maybe even three three i think we, i I, co think I come over and we work on this project because i uh, i want no matter what i want there to be progression always for I this, want this project, project to be, be fucking awesome because and the thing I'm is so excited to i am too to and it feels fucking out. awesome it, it feels kind of back to like the syndigo days working on it i think oh like, yeah it's a problem and i and i think what i want to do is even if we're not coming in and just recording let's plays or uploading as much like people can rest assured that we are working on something that is big that will be coming out s soon yes i would um, also like to start recording more drunk drawing again yes well i feel like we're getting to the point where we can <laughs> we were like oh we can't because the pandemic's so bad but, but now the pandemic's even worse yeah, we're just waiting for jackson yeah jackson has been out of town for over a month He's been so basically Jackson has this deal with this older woman where uh, she pays him a weekly allowance and he, uh, you know, does things. I don't want to get into details. I don't want I don't want to give away his personal info. But recently she said, 
I'm I'm lonely during this pandemic. Come visit me in Utah. So he has been in Utah for the last month. Well, she asked him to send pictures first, but oh yeah, well, I guess that's not important. To that's say. not important. I'll no. cut that out. Um, she did the casting thing where she made him do the the mold of his <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but he's been in Utah for a month. Uh, seeing this this older woman. Uh, so I don't want to get into his personal life or give away too many details. Yeah. But, uh, he'll be coming back soon, and then once he's back, we're gonna get drunk, drawing, going again. Uh oh. Fart sound effect. Oh, there it is. There it is. Hell yeah. <laughs> Ryan, since this was the poo-poo episode, what do you say we uh We end it with a big poo-poo? Yeah. I mean we just poo-poo. had a fart sound effect play. You think it's Hey buddy, it's the poo-poo episode. That is true. Okay, so we'll see you guys next week for episode two hundred. And